and welcome! Here is Alex from Black Sheep IT Consulting and this is our monthly update on Siebel CRM updates. So it's August and we have just heard of the shipment of Siebel CRM 23.8. So let's take a look inside. Well, it's a bug fix only release. So that means this video is probably going to be shorter no problem there, but we're going to take a look at at least one interesting change in the database upgrade guide where the WF, the workflow cleanup utility, has been documented. If you're interested in your latest security issues, then you would be pleased to know that Tomcat has been updated to 9076. So the feature workflow cleanup utility is not actually new. It has been introduced in 23.1. So it's present in any of these versions. So what does it do? It addresses an issue that arises from the change in the workflow process naming convention that happened in 22.7 and subsequently higher versions. Remember 22.7 was the version when workflows became fully workspace managed. So as of 22.7 and higher, the two columns name and process name or proc underscore name in the design repository table for workflows, which is S underscore WFR underscore proc, those two columns must have the same value, which could be different if you come from an earlier version and have worked with workflows there, which is highly likely. So in any earlier version, the name column contains a version number. So what you see in Siebel tools is actually the proc name, where there is no version number in, let's say, IP17 and higher, but the name column is holding the process name and a colon and followed by the version number. So that can cause problems when you update to 22.7 or higher. So if you update to 23.8, for instance, then you might encounter after the update workflow related errors during delivery or rebase in your development environment. If you encounter these errors or to prevent them, use the WF cleanup utility. And this utility is now documented in the database upgrade guide. You'll find the link in the description. It's also on your screen. So that's it mainly for the 23.8 update. But if you want to talk about and meet like-minded people, um, the latest and greatest Siebel features in Siebel 23, then consider coming to the Apps Unlimited days of Oracle, which are taking place the second time in Europe. So last year was a great success. And this year Oracle is repeating the effort of hosting the Apps Unlimited Days Europe in several cities across the continent. Just a reminder, Apps Unlimited is the umbrella that Oracle chose to host the on-prem dinosaur applications, if you will, eBusiness Suite, Hyperion, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, and of course, Siebel. I can see on the dates that the first date in Zurich is approaching fast. So a few weeks from now, here at the Siebel Hub headquarters, we will be packing our bags and traveling to those cities. So we plan to be present in each of those cities. Please check the Siebel Hub for updates and you'll find the link to the registration page of Oracle in the description. So you could say, well, 23.8, that's a boring release. There is no really fancy new features. So why update? Why bother? Why not wait for a later update? Or why update? <laughs> why not update to an earlier one? Well, just a reminder, the latest monthly Siebel update, which 
at the time of this recording is 23.8, has more bugs fixed than any other release. So if you want to get the most secure uh, release, then take the latest one. Check the release notes that Oracle provides for news on which bugs have been fixed. And also, as we have seen, likely it ships with a higher and thus more secure version of third-party software and libraries such as Tomcat or jQuery, etc. And it's cumulative, so you don't have to worry about not getting a feature that is included in an earlier version because Oracle has a cumulative approach. So when you update to the latest, you have those features and all the features of the versions you are jumping over. So it comes at no surprise that Oracle recommends to update on a regular basis and that the reason for that is, if you need any more reasons, the gap between the versions, if it's smaller, then it means less friction because you have just done an update maybe a few months ago when you need to do another one. So it's so probably running much smoother and you have more time to evaluate and test because there are fewer features that otherwise overwhelm you if you wait for, it, let's say, three years. Also, your development and administrators get into the groove, so to speak, through more practice. Uh, if you practice updates, then you can conduct them even smoother. What if you are not in a position to update? You're still on IP16 or earlier. Well, all we can say here is upgrade already. That means in IP16 or earlier, you don't get any updates from Oracle. What happens to your security concerns? The operating systems, the databases, the browsers you're using are probably no longer supported even by the vendor, like Internet Explorer, and you're missing out on all these IP17 Plus features that have been added over the past six years. Yes, it's six years since IP17 came out, actually, to the day. So you're missing out on all these features, including, for example, workspaces, migration application, web tools, REST API test automation, cloud integration, the Kafka integration just released two months ago, architectural changes that support modern cloud-based or on-prem infrastructures using containers, and OpenUI also got several updates along the years. So this is not a complete list, just would you please upgrade, and that's it. So. If you plan on upgrading, we've added, been adding a bit of content here, as you can see, then the oldest version officially supported in the database upgrade guide is 7.5.3. So that actually is 20 years old. And still you can do an upgrade, albeit the upgrade will be a two-step upgrade. It's documented and you have to migrate high interactivity to open UI. So that's really in the red zone and really a lot of work there. It gets easier the higher your version is because remember, less friction. And so you might be on 7.8 through 8.2, the non-open UI releases, which still require you to migrate high interactivity to open UI. And the two-step upgrade takes you to 8.1.1 and you might be on any 8 or IP release that supports OpenUI here. So if you're already on OpenUI, you don't have to manage a migration there. And you also use the incremental repository merge, which is a high-speed version of the upgrade, so to speak. Still, the project will take a significant amount of time. We're talking about person months, or person years at least. So you don't expect an upgrade of Siebel CRM to take place in a few weeks. That's not happening. 
you will upgrade always to the latest version. So ignore those naysayers who say you have to install IP17 first and then you have to install 22 and then upgrade to 22 and then update. That's not the case. You use the latest version to run the upgrade and your database gets all the necessary bits and pieces of that latest version. And of course you get the binaries and the infrastructure. So what if you are already on IP17 and higher, which includes IP17 itself and the non-IP releases, Siebel 18 to through 23 at the time of this recording, you can benefit from the continuous update releases, which means if you're on any of the green releases, you can run an update process. And this update includes a utility called post install database setup. Optional, you can run a repository upgrade and that will take just a few person days. So that's one of the reasons we say upgrade often. Sorry, I say that. And that's why we say update often to practice and get the latest and greatest features, security and bug fixes from Siebel CRM. That's it for today. Thank you very much for joining. Take care and bye bye.